Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a delightful question from the International Mathematical Olympiad in 1976. Determine the largest number that is the product of positive integers whose sum is 1976. Interestingly, three years later on the Putnam competition, there was basically the same question for 1979. I guess in the pre-internet days, it was easier to reuse the same sort of question without all students already knowing how to solve the question. We can also generalize the problem. Let n be a natural number greater than zero. Choose natural numbers x1 to xk such that their sum is equal to n and their product is equal to p. The question is to determine a formula for p. I thank Yarek for the suggestion. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So let's start working out a few examples. We have a number n, and we want to figure out its maximal product of its partitions. So let's say n is equal to 1. We can only have one partition, which is 1, so the product will be equal to 1. What about n is equal to 2? We can either have 2 or we can have 1 plus 1. It's clear that 2 will be the larger product, so p is equal to 2. We advance to 3. So now we either have 3, 2 plus 1, or 1 plus 1 plus 1. Obviously the largest product is 3, so p is 3. When we go to 4, we can have 4, we can have 3 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 1 plus 1, or 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Again, it's obvious that 4 is the largest product, but we could also have 2 plus 2 because 2 times 2 is equal to 4, so p is equal to 4. Now what if we go to n is equal to 5? There are going to be 7 partitions of 5. So just examining these different cases, we can see the largest product is going to be 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. So p is equal to 6. Now let's go to n is equal to 6. There are 11 partitions of 6. So it's going to start getting difficult to write out all of these partitions, but we'll just do it in this case. Now what is the largest product? We can work them out pretty easily, and we can see it will be 3 times 3, and that will be equal to 9. So now we've worked out a few cases, and we can conjecture what the solution might be. So if n is greater than 6, we can imagine that the best strategy is to choose as many 3's as possible, and then we might need a couple of 2's. So how can we prove this? So let's get started. So first of all, we never want to pick a number that's equal to 1. It'll just be wasted in the product. If we have two natural numbers, x and 1, that'll be a smaller product than just the number x plus 1. This is clear, 1 times x is less than x plus 1. So we never want to choose 1. We also never want to choose a number that's greater than 4. Why is that? Well, you could take that number that's greater than 4, and you could split it into two numbers, so we have the number minus 2 and 2. So that number will actually be a smaller product than x minus 2 and 2. So here's how we can see that. So we have 2 multiplied by x minus 2. That's equal to 2x minus 4. Now if x is greater than 4, this is larger than 2x minus x, but 2x minus x is equal to x. So we've shown that the product of 2 and x minus 2 is greater than x when x is greater than 4. So you never want to choose a number that's greater than 4. So all that remains is between 2's and 3's. Now notice that if we have 2 plus 2 plus 2, that's equal to 3 plus 3, which is equal to 6. But 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8, and 3 times 3 is equal to 9, and that is larger than 8. So we never want to have 3 or more 2's. It would be better to have 2 3's instead. So at most, we're going to have 2 plus 2 or just 2. 
Now, it will be equivalent to choose 4 or 2 plus 2, because 4 is equal to 2 times 2. So we might as well just pick 2s to keep things simple. So that's our strategy. We want to pick as many 3s as possible, and we might need a 2 or a 2 plus 2, depending on the number. So which option we pick depends on the remainder of the number by 3. If n is equivalent to 0 mod 3, then n is evenly divisible by 3, n is equal to 3 times k, so then we can pick all the 3s we want, and p is equal to 3 to the power of k. Another case is if n is equivalent to 1 mod 3, this means n is equal to 3k plus 1. In this case, we're going to need 2 plus 2. So p is equal to 2 squared multiplied by 3 to the power of k minus 1. The final case is n is equivalent to 2 mod 3, then n is equal to 3k plus 2, so we just need 1, 2. So we have p is equal to 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of k. And we've solved the general case. So now, let's solve the International Mathematical Olympiad problem. So we need to figure out this problem for 1976. Now 1976 is equal to 658 multiplied by 3 plus 2. So we have a remainder of 2. So p will be equal to 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 658. To solve the Putnam problem, this is 3 more, so 1979 is equal to 659 multiplied by 3 plus 2. So p is equal to 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 659. So that solves the problems. But this leaves one question. What is so special about the number 3 that we want to pick as many 3s as possible? So first, let's consider the AMGM inequality. So if we have non-negative numbers x and y, we have the square root of x multiplied by y is less than or equal to x plus y all over 2. So the geometric mean of x and y is less than or equal to the arithmetic mean of x and y. Now if we square both sides of the equation, we get the product of x times y is less than or equal to the square of the arithmetic mean. Now remember, we have equality if and only if x is equal to y. So in other words, the maximum product of x and y is when x and y are equal to each other. So we want to get the numbers as evenly equal to each other as possible. So if we have x1, x2, the sum of all this up to xn equal to s, then we want to pick the maximum product will happen when we get the numbers as close to each other as possible. So let's suppose we have n numbers of x, and that's equal to this fixed sum s. So we'll consider a continuous case. We can have fractional numbers. So we want to maximize the product, which will be x to the power of n. Now from the first equation, we can solve that n is equal to s divided by x. So this means the product is equal to x to the power of s over x. So this is a function of x now, which we can maximize. We'll maximize the function x to the power of s over x. So how can we do that? Well, the trick is we write y is equal to this, and then we take the natural log of both sides. So we can bring down the exponent. From here, we can use implicit differentiation. So on the left-hand side, if we take the derivative with respect to x, we have y prime divided by y. Then on the right-hand side, we use the chain rule. So we have the first term multiplied by the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x, plus we have the second term natural log of x multiplied by the derivative of s over x, and that's equal to negative s over x squared. We can then simplify this so we have a common denominator. So we have y prime divided by y is equal to s multiplied by 1 minus natural log of x. This is all over x squared. From here, we multiply both sides of the equation by y. But now we remember that y is equal to x to the power of s over x. So now let's analyze the derivative. We know that s and x are greater than 0. So x to the power of s over x will be greater than 0. And, of course, 1 over x squared is greater than 0. So the only thing that might affect the sign of the derivative is the term 1 minus the natural log of x. So we analyze this. This will be positive when x is less than e. It will be 0 when x is equal to e. And it will be negative when x is greater than e. 
So we have a maximum when x is equal to e, which is approximately equal to 2.718. So now think about the original problem. We have a sum of numbers, n numbers, that's a fixed sum s. We said we want to pick as many threes as possible, and we may need two or two plus two, depending on the number. So what's so special about the number three? Well, if you look at the continuous case, we want to get as close to e as possible. When we're limited to whole numbers, we pick the number that is closest to e, and that will be the number three. And that is what's so special about three. What an interesting question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.